Well, the stage is set for the coronation ceremony of Amazulu King, Mrs. Zulu Gazwelitini. He succeeds the throne following the death of his father, King Goodwill Zwelitini, just last year. The ceremonial entering of the kraal takes place this very weekend. This, of course, despite his brother, Prince Magade, having entered the kraal just last week, claiming to be the rightful leader of the Zulu nation. ENC senior reporter Pamanta Koke is there for us and joins us now for an update. But before we do that, you can see live visuals coming through of some of the maidens in Dombi dancing, singing, and of course celebrating in jubilation. But Pamantla, we know that while those festivities are ongoing, of course, on the other hand, uh, court action to interdict the ceremony is currently, of course, uh, being uh, pursued by another faction of the royal family. Indeed, it will continue to be the case. These legal battles and court actions are far from over. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I can pretty much tell you right now that you may very well end up at the highest court or in the highest court in the land, which is the Constitutional Court. So let's talk about today's urgent court application. It's being brought by two daughters of the late Amazulu King, Kutwil Zuli Tiniga Zulu, from Waketom Tandayo Royal Palace. It's the very same daughters, princesses, who were challenging the validity of the late king's will, arguing that the signature may have been forged there. So now they want to halt this whereby the king will enter the grand ceremony. They say pending the finalization of all the court processes and the dispute that is ongoing and also saying pending the finalization of that application for leave to appeal. Remember yesterday the Supreme Court of Appeal granted application for leave to appeal and that is the matter relating to their mother, Queen Sibongile Umadlamini from Waketom Tandayo. She's dealing with a matter of whereby she wants the courts to determine her marriage to the late Amazulu King Kutwil Zwelitini Kape Uzulu. So she's arguing that she's the first wife. She should inherit 50% of the late King's estate and that she should be the only one really who should be recognized as having been legally married to the late King. That's application number one. The application for leave to appeal has been granted in that regard, in that aspect. So today, as we speak, there is an urgent application at the Peter Maritzburg High Court in Guazuru Natal, whereby two princesses from Waketum Tandayo want the court to halt this Uptokwagwisilo ceremony, saying pending the finalization of all the legal processes and that, of course, matter that is going to the Supreme Court of Appeal. So it seems as if it's a last-minute attempt to try and interdict this. The matter was meant to get underway somewhere just after half past nine in Peter Maritzburg High Court. But as we speak currently here inside the palace, more and more Mabuto, the maidens and old mama are flocking to Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace as they are trying to come and show their support to Amazulu King, Misuzulu Kazuelit. I'm going to bring in Shalom Bata. Shalom Bata is a historian and author. She has written extensively on the history and culture of of Amazulu as a nation, but uh, she is working with the new king now, that is King Misuzulu Kazuelitin, and we'll try and get some reaction from her as well as I see police helicopters circling around Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace here. Yeah, security is very tight and heavy. It's just for the safety of everyone who's here at the palace. While we wait for Shalom Bata, let me show you the crawl here. On my right, as my hard-working colleague here, Joe Komane, is showing you the visuals of Isibaya, the crawl that King Mrs. Lugas Veltini has already entered. Yesterday evening, between midnight and 4 a.m., the king was inside that crawl with senior members of Amazulu royal family and also members of the kingdom of Eswatini. Those are from his mother's side. And there is a house that has been built specifically for the king, the a modern house that has been designed on the other side there, which is where the king slept after emerging from the crown. The king slept inside the palace, but he couldn't sleep inside the palace's main house because, remember, in terms of culture and protocol, his mother is buried at the palace. He will not be frequenting this palace to sleep over. A specially designed house had to be, you know, 
made for him after emerging from the kraal he slept there and of course there is a special traditional hut that is just on our left here and all those were used during the processes of, of the ceremony that took place yesterday night those who know the zulu culture and history will tell you that the special traditional hut that you see right now is very significant in terms of the design, the culture, the heritage of the Zulu nation. You will have the Krolis Baya and you will have that traditional hut as the house which, you know, the elders used to connect with the departed, the ancestors. Shalom Bata is right here with us now. She is joining us. Thank you very much for your time, Shalom. Let's talk about one. The matter that is before the courts, it was meant to get underway somewhere between 9 o'clock and 9.30, Peter Marisbeck High Court, to interdict to go to Agwesilo. What do you make of that? I'm just happy to be here, and you're very welcome at Guacanela Palace. We've come to coronate the king. Um, what is happening in, in, in Peter Marisbeck is very far from us. So please, can we just talk about what's happening here, please? But they want to interdict what is happening. It's not going to, it's not going to change anything. His majesty is getting fine. He's going to be here. We're looking forward. Whatever is happening in Peter Marisbeck is going to be handled there. Right now, the situation of asking questions about whether they want to interdict or not, by the way, it is not new in the royal family. He said it was King Shaka. King Shaka had to get his brothers out of the way to become king. He didn't stop with him. King Kachwai had to, there was a civil war. It, those days, there was no talking, there were no courts. You went to the field and sorted yourselves out. That was King Kachwai. King Tinizun, who was King Kachwai's son, he also, when he passed, remember he was in St. Helena, right, in exile. When he passed, there was confusion he was going to be king, or chances also, you know, came up. And there's poor Prince uh, David Unyao. He was made king. He only lasted for 24 hours. He was asked nicely to vacate the seat. Uh, by so the, by Kepantamba. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you know that part. So, there was King Dinizulu, right? Uh, king, his son. Eh? Uh, and then, sometime, Nopusha, there was another... A prince who was a regent who was not very keen to let go until the late king decided, Can I have my father's keys to the palace? And it has a gabab. And they said, Pechan, a pumas go in that big valley. I love it. You understand? And don't forget, this is Wakangela Palace. The Zulu kings are here. This is uninterrupted Zulu lineage. So, what is happening? If it did not happen, we'll be very worried, remember. But it's not, it's going to change anything. We are here. His Majesty is going to be here. And the, 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 the spirit of the other Zulu kings are right here. King Mrs. Zulu Gatini Zulu, he was born to the Swazi princess, the late queen. The, so there's no question about who's supposed to be the heir. Who offered the Swazi royal family Ilobolo? It was not out of his majesty, the late majesty's pocket. It came from Isizwe. So automatically, it was obvious that he's going to be the next uh, um, king. Number three, even the late king said, he is, how do you say this in, 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 in English? It is very obvious who our king is. So today, with or without the court action, what if the, what if the court order comes out and says, well, this ceremony is interdicted? It's not going to happen. It changes nothing. Have you forgotten what happened in January in San Juan? I haven't. Thank you. There's no more to be said. The Amabuto are here, Izintombi is here, there's food. Why, well, excited. But let's talk about the significance of today then, to the Zulu nation itself. They are king entering the kraal. Why is it significant? It's significant because he is being introduced to the previous kings and to the ancestors. And why that is important is because remember the Zulu culture, the ancestors live in the kraal. To say, here is your son who is now going to be king. Therefore, you walk with him in 24 hours, protect him, more important, give him wisdom, and as well as give him the spirit of forgiveness. Because the people who are taking him to court are actually his blood. So trust me, they may even come here to attend, or they will, sooner or later we'll see them together. Because remember, the Zulu people as a nation are very forgiving, let alone if it's a king. Okay, thank you very much for time. I've spotted someone here from Gauteng. She will tell me why she's here. Thank you very much for your time. All the way from Gauteng, That's Johannesburg. Right. That's right. Why are you here? Uh, I, I heard the king is going to come here today. So I wondered maybe he's looking for a wife. <laughs> I don't know if he's, if he's going to watch this. Then he says, no, I'm, I'm here. I want to be the first white queen of South Africa, the first white Zulu queen.
But let's talk about the importance of nations and races coming together, celebrating African culture, tradition and heritage. And for the spirit of social cohesion, your presence here would send a message to some people that this is not only about Amazon. That's true. I can't tell you how humbled I am to be here and to be welcomed so warmly. Um, you know, my, my people came to this country in the 1820s or thereabouts, and this, this is what we came to, this is what we found. Um, it was here long before us. And your people clashed with Amazon. <laughs> they clashed, they clashed. And it's time now to, to start recognizing that this is where all humankind comes from, that this is where our ancestry dates back to. Okay, um, can we please have your full first name and surname? Yes, my name is Avril Cummins. Okay, thank you very much for your time. We'll have to leave it at that. Let's just walk inside the palace right now with my colleague Joe Komane here as we show you uh, what is happening inside the palace. I've spotted a senior delegation of Abe Fundisi from the Nazareth Baptist Church, that is Ibanda Lama Nazareth, popularly known as Ushembe. Very significant because the late king had a very close relationship with Ama Nazareth and the current king, by the way, is also a member of the church of Ama Nazareth. We see senior government officials also arriving here. Government is playing part in this uh, ceremony. You will have the Premier of Wazuru Natal, Nomosa Tubengube, also arriving here this afternoon. We expect more and more government officials to come to Wakangela Mantengane Royal Palace. But Joe Komane will show you the visuals of uh, Iban Galama Nazareth, the Nazareth Baptist Church that has just entered here. They are here to basically embrace and bless this gathering. Today being Isabata, I'm sure they will perform their Sabbath prayer here at Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace and they will be ensuring that they bless this gathering. San Bonan in Jan. Naze Naba, Shenerat. Usugol Kulu Namshanje Bantuana, what does it mean? Usugulom Land or Bantuana? And we are grateful to witness this experience. Mm -hmm. yes. Very historic. Very historic events. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> well, these are members of the royal family here, yeah, the Zulu royal family. Now, of course, as we try and walk towards the main entrance of Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace, we just want to show you the visuals of. Uh, Yes, as we walk towards the main entrance of Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace here, senior members of the Nazareth Baptist Church in Isizulu, we say Izingwe, for you know, the elders. These are the priests, of course, they are young ones as well, and women who are here who will be praying for this ceremony to go smooth and to go very well here so you see what is happening inside the palace they are here to bless this ceremony let me remind you that the nazareth baptist church by the way had a special visit here led by their leader inko sunyas luezulum tutuzi shembe they visited the very same palace of wakangela mankengane to come and meet with the king at the time of course there were issues and tension but they came here to pray for him they were asking for strength and wisdom for him and they were saying he must be blessed in ruling the great Amazulu nation and today they are here to perform their uh, Saturday prayers here this is what will be happening throughout the rest of the day this is inside the palace there is a prayer going on by members of the Nazareth Baptist Church it's one of the biggest churches in southern Africa and in Africa. They've got millions of followers. When they were here, I think a couple of months ago, thousands flocked to Kwakangela Mankengane Royal Palace. So, too many things happening today. Court action underway in Peter Maritzburg, trying to interdict to Kwakwesilo. On the other hand, the program is underway, Wakangela Mankengane, and uh, those who support King Misuzulugazwelitini say, well, it's too late now, the horse has bolted, has bolted, we are on the last installment of the activities following the king entering the kraal yesterday.
between midnight and 4 a.m. in the morning. They are saying what is happening really is just too late to interdict this ceremony because now today is only about the public event. All the sacred rituals have been performed by the king. He has been taken to the kraal by the senior members of Amazul royal family and those who are from the kingdom of Eswatini where his mother is from. That is the late Queen Regent Manfombi. And uh, on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, the king went on a ritual hunt whereby he killed a lion as a sign of strength and power. And also he came back with that lion and it was used during those sacred ceremonies inside the kraal yesterday evening. However, of course, when he sits on the throne, that lion will be besides him. You know, those who know Isizulu will say he killed Untanga Yamakosi. In Isizulu culture, the lion is regarded as Untanga Yamakosi. And uh, I think uh, very soon the king will be arriving. Let me try and just get closer to the main entrance and go back to the main entrance here because I'm sure there will be some movement. I think the king will be coming. Absolutely, I'm being told here that the king is making his way to the palace and uh, he was here, slept here after performing those rituals. He may have left the palace coming back now, but from midnight till the early hours of the morning, he was here at the palace because there was no way he was going to perform those ceremonies and then leave the palace. So it only had to happen that he is here at the palace after performing that. Of course, after the early hours, then he could have stepped out, but he will soon come back as he has to enter here at Wakangela Mangengane Royal Palace and uh, the ceremony will get underway. While we wait for him to arrive, let us give you Isabelelo Sama Nazareth. Let's give you some natural sound from the Nazareth Baptist Church members as they take on Isabelelo Sabo as they sing. They are starting their service and their Sabbath prayer and they will be asking for wisdom. They will be asking for the gods to protect and give strength to King Misuzulu Kazueliti. Let's just take a listen to the natural sound. This is very beautiful. As we listen to that rendition and that Ihubo Pai or Isabele Lopai Amanazareth, let's just tell you what has been happening. Just to recap here that uh, members of the Zulu royal family, I see the arrival of the mayor of Zululand district municipality, Tula Sizwe Butelezi. Let's talk about today. Very significant. Your municipality, Zululand district municipality, serves and sits here in the Zululand, and this is, you know, the land of the king. Why is this important for your district, Zululand, but for Amazulu as a whole? This is a sacred day in the history of the Zulu nation. As you can see, the Nazareth Baptist Church has started their morning devotions because the king entering the crawl is a sacred occasion. This is a huge boost for the economy of Zululand. As we have seen arriving this morning, King Mpezeni of Zambia, King Mbelwa of Malawi, and many other royal families who are here to pledge their support to King Mrs. Zulu.
but moving forward, what is to happen for Amazulu as a nation to ensure unity and members of the royal family to put aside their differences and unite for the sake of the throne and the nation? That is our plea. Thousands and thousands of Zulus are here because they know who their king is. And we implore the rest of our nation to unite behind our king as he leads the Zulu nation forward. Thank you very much for your time. Let me release you. I know you have to go back inside Wakangela Mangongame Royal Palace. These are senior members of the Guazulu Natal Provincial Government here. Mr. Lennox Mabaso is the communications director for the Provincial Government of Guazulu Natal. He is with Mr. Sam Kuzwayo, who used to be the chief of staff of uh, the office of the Premier, that is former Premier Mr. Sesel Zagalala. Mr. Guazim Chetwa is also there. So these are government officials and tells you that they are both the premier of Wazulu Natal, that is Nomusa Dubengube, will be arriving here at Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace and the premier will be representing, you know, the provincial government as we await for the program to get underway. In the meantime, that court action was set to get underway this morning at the High Court sitting in Peter Marichberg two daughters of the late king of Amazulu, that is the uh, princesses from Kwaketo Mtandai Royal Palace. They want the court to halt this Uktokwagwesilo ceremony. They are arguing that it cannot go ahead pending the finalization of all the court applications and the legal battles that are underway. And the Supreme Court of Appeal granted that application for leave to appeal in terms of in terms of that matter involving Queen Sbongi Legumadamini of Waketum Tandayo, she wanted the courts initially at the level and the division of the High Court to deal with the issue of her marriage to the late king. She was arguing that she is the only one who is legally married to the late king. She should inherit 50% of the late king's estate and the other queens must divide the remaining 50% out of 100%. And she was saying she wanted the courts to deal with that matter and to rule on that. Of course, remember that application at the time was dismissed and then she had to go through and apply for application for leave to appeal. So that has been granted yesterday by the Supreme Court of Appeal. Today, her daughters are arguing that while well, pending the finalization of everything that is happening in terms of court processes, this ceremony cannot continue as I see one of the king's daughters from Kangela Mankengane Royal Palace there that is Princess Ndando also who is in conversation with Dr. Temba Fagazi, one of the late king's friends and confidants, if we can put it like that. So Princess Ndando from Wakangela Mankengane is also at the palace. Of course, she's waiting for her brother to enter the kraal. Her brother will be fled by senior members of the Zulu royal family. I'm talking about male members and then male members from Eswatini kingdom because King Mrs. Zulu's mother is from the kingdom of Eswatini. She is the daughter to the great king Sopova of Eswatini. So you will have a mixture here of Amaswazi and Amazulu. There are other nations as well. Amampondo are here and other nations have come to show their support. This is not only about Amazulu, it's about Amanguni and Africans in particular. It doesn't matter which nation, but it's all about the spirit of African unity, the spirit of Africanness. It's, yes, led by Amazon, but other nations are here to embrace what is happening at the palace because Amazulu is a nation they cannot coexist or rather they cannot exist in isolation they need to coexist with other nations it's been happening in the past you know for many years nations across the continent of Africa have been coexisting have been trading and have been having relations on their own because no nation can exist in isolation so to have other nations coming to Wakangela Mankengane Royal Palace to embrace what is happening. It's a sign of African unity and African spirit.
All right, thank you so much. Okay, we'll be sure to catch up with you, colleague, as you uh, also catch your breath. And uh, we'll be enjoying some of the visuals uh, coming through, seeing beautiful attires worn by not only uh, Izin Dumbi that we're seeing in front of us, but also different nations coming together uh, to witness this historical moment, remembering uh, what the Amampondo delegates had said earlier on, that uh, it's also, you know, a way to come and form interrelations. This could be for marriage. This could be for, you know, building nations, collaborating. Uh, that's why they're also here, to come together there's different nations uh, to witness uh, this day. But as we continue, of course, to give you those visuals out in Kwanongom, I'm joined by Mabu Tungobo, Mapoloba, or Polops, um, as some, of course, may call it my colleague Mabuto, uh, joining me right here on ENC. As we continue our conversation, we're going to talk about the significance of what we're seeing here. But I want to touch on Mabuto, what uh, Spamantla Koke had raised, that court interdict uh, that uh, comes from a part of the function of the royal family to halt this ceremony that we're seeing. I don't know how you know uh, feasible that would be now to stop everything and say King Mrs. Zulu would not enter the crawl, but does it pose a threat to today's festivities? It's going to be very interesting uh, because like uh, um, our colleagues, Pamanda Koke is saying that um, everything was done overnight. Mm. So it would be interesting how the court um, is going to decide on this matter because they are applying for the court interdict. So if everything happened last night and then today is just for public uh, to come and, you know, witness and stuff like that, then um, it, it would be interesting, really, how, how is the court going to say what will be the decision of the court? But also mm. as well, um, my understanding uh, is that they, they also have to prove to the court uh, how is this ceremony going to prejudice them? So uh, they, they'll also have to prove that. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, um, the applicants uh, are not the contenders to the throne. Um, the contenders of the throne are not part of this application. So it's going to be very interesting how the court um, will, will decide on, mm. on this matter. Yeah. It might be confusing for some viewers as well, uh, Mabuto, because in the media, uh, we've also seen Prince Magaite says he's already entered the kraal. Um, he's already performed sacred, you know, ancestral, um, you know, uh, performances and, and, and rituals to present himself to the kraal. So who then is, is, is the rightful uh, heir to the throne or the king to the throne here? J just for the viewers to understand that if Prince Margaret has done it before, uh, is this significant? Like, does it mean both of them now have been recognized by the ancestors? Uh, from what we heard from the Prime Minister of Amazulu Nation, uh, Prince Mangosu Tukcheliz, uh, that uh, is not uh, significant. Um, in fact, uh, he's been saying that uh, King Misuzulu is already um, the king of Amazulu mm. because he has been uh, presiding over um, different ceremonies that usually would be presided over by um, uh, the late king, uh, King Zuelitiniga Peguzulu. For instance, um, there is an annual um, King Shaga commemoration at right. Watuguza. So he presided over uh, that uh, ceremony. Um, I believe that uh, it's going to be there again this year in September. So again, he's going to be presiding over that ceremony if everything goes accordingly. And beside that, there's also another annual um, ceremony um, commemorating the Anglo-Zulu War at mm. Sandrana, mm. which happened in, on 22 January 1879. He presided over that ceremony. I remember there was a, a they, they tried to have a, uh, to apply for a court interdict, but unfortunately they were not um, successful. I think it was Prince Mboni Sizul who applied for that uh, court interdict, but unfortunately he was not successful um, on that court interdict. So he has already uh, presided over a number of um, e uh, things that used to be presided over by uh, the late king Zueliti Niga Peguzul. So, um, according to Prince Mangosu Tukcheles, the Prime Minister of Amazulu Nation, what is happening now is just a mere um, decoration, if I can put it that way, mm. just uh, ceremonies. But the, the king is already in the throne um, because he has presided over a number of um, events that right. usually are presided over by, by the king of Amazulu. Yeah. For someone who is not privy to the history of the Zulu nation, dating back to King Shaga and his predecessors, is this new? 
uh, to, you know, around a king's coronation. I'm talking here about some of the challenges, the disagreements, uh, different royal functions uh, or, or functions within the royal family. Is, this, is, is what we're seeing here new to Mrs. Zulu or has it been happening dating back to history? And, and how have they resolved those issues previously? A very good question. Uh, this is not something new. If you follow uh, Amazulu history, you will know that in 1816, um, the much-revered king of Amazulu, King Shaga Gassenzangakon, he had to kill his own brother in order to become the king of uh, this nation. Uh, fast forward that to 1828. His own brother, King Dingane, had to kill uh, King Shaga in order to become the king of Amazulu. And then for that, again, in 1840, King Bande had to kill or had to declare war with his brother, King Dingane, at, at the Battle of Makongo. It fought in 1840 at Makongo, yes, yeah. Mm. Uh, King Bande was supported by uh, the Boers. So they defeated uh, King Dingane, his own brother. And then again, when Bra uh, K uh, King Bande was on the throne, I think uh, somewhere around 1850 something, but it was in the late uh, half of the 20th century, 19th century. His own uh, um, children, uh, Prince Zetwayo, before he became a king, mm. as well as uh, Prince Mboyaz, had to fight each other uh, in what became the most bloodiest civil war in the history of Amazulu nation. It fought, if you cross. Uh, um, to Gela River, to the north of, of uh, Kaiser 10. That's where that uh, battle fought. So many people died in such a way that some um, scholars, they say that some, some of the bones of the people in the past few years could mm. still be found there. So, so what I'm trying to say, the currency at the time was the blood, if you want to be the king. Because even King Tingane, when he was on the throne, he killed a number of his brothers, except one who became the king, uh, King Mbande. So the currents at the time was the blood. If yeah. you want to be the king, then you have to spill the blood and become a king. So what we are seeing today is not something new. It has happened before. It's just that now we have access to television, we have access to social media, everything is right there. In fact, I do believe that it's only Amazulu nation that are encountering this uh, dispute. It also happened to uh, other kingdoms mm. and stuff like that. So it's not something new. Even in recent years, um, I believe it was uh, King Solomon who took over uh, after King Dinizul. There was also a dispute. There was mm. a king. I think the other scholar was talking about that. Um, when King Solomon passed on, no, actually King Dinizul passed on, the other name that was put forward was uh, Prince Nyawan, David Nyawan. The, the other scholar was talking about that. Everybody hailed uh, Prince Nyawan as their king shortly after uh, the burial of uh, King, um, uh, uh, king Solomon. And then uh, later on, uh, it was realized that there was a letter that was written by uh, King Dinizulu that actually uh, uh, um, uh, 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 King Solomon mm. is the one who's supposed to be the king of, of Amazon. So it has happened before. And, and even the delayed king, uh, right. King Zolitiniga uh, Peguzulu, also had some. If, if you look at uh, uh, the first part of the praise singer, talk about those things. Uh, that the, the praise singer is talking about things that were happening where some of members of the royal family were trying to Right. you know not to allow him to become a, a, a king you know yes. so so it's not something new it has happened it has several happened times and, and as we continue with this conversation mabuto uh, let's listen to amabuto now uh, singing and chanting and uh, we'll continue with our conversation
Indeed, we are at Guakangela Mangengane Royal Palace. It's just festivities all around here. Is in Tombi, the maidens, oh mama, amabuto, they are all flocking to the Royal Palace here. Yeah, today is a big day. He will enter the kraal. He has already done so, by the way, at midnight, between midnight and the wee hours of the morning, between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. in the morning. He was accompanied by senior members of the royal family to perform sacred ceremonies and rituals inside the kraal. Amazulu King has been introduced formally to the departed great kings of the nation. They've been told that he is the son of the late king His name is King Misuzulu Singobi Please look after him, protect him, guide him and give him wisdom to lead his father's nation and take the nation to greater heights. And that's why today it's more of a public celebration event whereby all components that make up a Zulu nation, including the maidens is in Tombi, also which you know is known as the flowers of the nation. You also have oh mama in Zalaban to those who give life, and we have Amabuto and Inzizwa, the protectors of the nation. All those are flocking to the palace to see their king entering the kraal and living, and all of them are here to give him well wishes and as they as the subjects, they will be saying to him, we are with you, we subject ourselves to you, please lead us, lead us very well, take us to greater heights in terms of development and making this nation of Amazulu a progressive one and very prosperous one. So they are coming to their father in a way to say we are here, we wish you well, but we have got conditions for you. As your subjects, we want you to conduct yourself in a very good and befitting manner of a king. We want you to lead us well we want you to take us to greater heights in terms of development. Amazulu as a nation, they face many socio-economic challenges, issues of poverty, inequality, unemployment. If you're talking about HIV and AIDS, this is one of the nations that is heavily affected and ravaged by the disease. So a lot has been happening in Guazuru Natal lately. You had the recent floods that claimed lives of many people. COVID-19 affected this province heavily together with other people as they uh, are making way for sorry those who okay, uh, we expect oh this is the MEC for sports arts and culture there is also MEC for public work <laughs> 
<laughs> These are members of the Executive Council of Wazulu Natal. That's MEC Amanda Bani, who is responsible for sports, arts and culture. And MEC Dr. Ntutugo Mashaba, responsible for public works and human settlements in KwaZulu Natal. They have arrived here. They will be joined, of course, by the Premier of KwaZulu Natal, Nomusa Dubenube. Their arrival signals the fact that their boss will be making her way to Wakangela Mangengane Royal Palace. Let me bring in Dr. Kuku Mazibugo. Togotela, thank you very much for time. Ben Kelu Sonde Lengapa Ngagi Minje. Ungamala Pola Ukwana Gilongile Siabonga Kakulu Gunja Numuri. Ngiabonga Kakulu eh Kumnandi Kute Lile Mfoka Koke Wakangela Mangengane. It's a very special day indeed, and it's significant as we see Prince Tulani there. Prince Tulani is the spokesperson of the Zulu royal family. We'll continue with this conversation with you. Let us see who's also arriving here. Okay, more and more people are arriving. But Dogotela, let's pick it up and talk about the significance of today. Why does it matter to Amazulu as a nation? Why is today significant? This is a very important day in our lifetime as Amazulu because the last coronation that we witnessed was in 1971 for the late King Kutwil Zulitin. It's a beautiful day. We are all looking forward to the activities and we are here to say to the King, lead us, we are your people. We've been hungry uh, for you as our King. So now we have a King on the throne and today we are celebrating and he has been introduced to the ancestors and he has this greatness uh, because he has also killed the lion. We are grateful. And this comes at a time whereby there is what is called in Isizulu, Ukulu Magwekeke, you know, Msindo Wasekaya, the dispute over the throne. Even though the king is firmly on the throne, but Princess Magade entered the crawl in Yogeni Royal Palace last week. Uh, Prince Buzabazi has been introduced as one of... Uh, the people who are contenders to the throne. But before we proceed with this, let's just give our viewers some natural sound of Amabuto singing and chanting. Let's take a listen.
special day, a historic day, and there is a monument task. As to unite and we are so privileged to be the generation that is able to see this manifest. And we just hope and pray that everyone will celebrate this day because even the word was speaking. Yes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a few weeks ago you met with Amazulu King, Mrs. Zulu Gazwelitini. Will the ANC be they can intervene as we know that there is a dispute going on in the royal family? The processes are underway as we speak, and that is why I'm saying that the issue of unity, unity, unity. The royal household is just a prestige, and we must all make sure that there is unity even amongst Abantuana and we are duty bound and obligated to make sure and salvage the situation so that it becomes easy for everyone to know that there is one Isilo in Wazulu and the president soon will do the coronation. And this is important for the unity of Africans. This is not only about Amazulu. Amambondo are here. They've got great historical relationship with Amazulu. Amaswati are here. And other nations are here as well. So this is not only about Amazulu today, but it's about Africans and Gunis and Africans in general. Kwame Nkrumah dreamt, dreamt about this day that at some point in time there must be unit amongst Africans because it is our wealthy, united, we are able to conquer other nations, but divided we fall, which is why that I've already mentioned that this is just a prestige and it must be protected, not for political gains, but for the gains of KwaZulu Natal, for the gains of South Africans, for Africans in particular, because there are mineral resources beneath the soil, so that must be protected by Zulu royal household as well. To ensure development of Amazulu as a nation who are ravaged by poverty and underdevelopment. Agreed, and I think at the level of tourism, you will have seen today there will be a lot of investment from our department. There will be a lot of investment even from sectoral engagement and stakeholders.